This is the Nexans Energy USA facility in Chester, New York. The plant is about 300,000 square feet. This facility manufactures a broad range of products, including tray cable, THHN, MC armored wire, non-metallic building wire, and SER-SEU service entrance cable. Hello, I'm Pat McHenry. Welcome to Nexans Energy USA, located in Chester, New York. Um, we had just finished an insulating process of cross-link material on aluminum wire, and it is now time to break the machine down, clean the extruder, pull the screw, and clean the screw. On the normal process, we would be at our run temperatures. At this point, we have already lowered the temperature to begin the scrubbing process with a lower grade reprocessed PVC to push polyethylene out and make the screw and the tooling easier to clean. One of my um, tools for, for the cleaning process of the student line, uh, this is a hand brush, hand wipe brush that we use in uh, two types of extra, uh, four types of extra brushes that we have, and uh, the drill that gets attached to every single brush in order to clean up the screw. Also what I have is uh, safety gloves and uh, sleeves to protect my arms from burns as well um, using my safety glasses and earplugs during the process. The PVC compound in this instance is coming out fairly warm. It's starting the scrubbing process inside the extruder. The first step is to begin to disassemble the crossheads, tip and die components, and other areas before opening up the clamp to begin the process of removing the screw. You can see how clean that component is. This is due to the cold PVC scrubbing it. In the case of polyethylene or nylon, it would have been coated with material which would have to be scrubbed off. So this process actually allows for self-cleaning. At the front of the crosshead, the die block is removed. It contains the sizing die. These components are cleaned next. At this point, you can see the compound is still in the die. The die is removed so it can be scraped clean. The next step is to take the neck apart. All components are now under 200 degrees Fahrenheit for safety. They normally run over 300 to 350 degrees. Once the breakdown process starts, it should not be stopped. If certain materials, like nylon, are allowed to cool, they would need to be reheated in order to continue the breakdown and cleaning process. Maintaining temperatures is critical in this process. Screws can get stuck if temperatures are too low. Up at the hopper, the rest of the compound is pushed out to clean it out completely. The extruder speed is increased to help push the remaining material out. This is called the purging process. The material flow has been reduced and now cold compound is present. The cold compound is used for scrubbing the surface of the screw so it will be easier to remove. No matter the material used, the process to clean the extruder is the same. Cleaning the area around the extruder is an important step, both for safety and to make sure no contaminants can enter the extruder again. A rolling cart is staged to receive the screw when it is pushed out.
A hydraulic press is used to push on the back of the screw to break the seal between the screw and the material. Now that the seal has been broken between the extruder and the screw, the screw is removed completely with the use of a push rod and table. A visual inspection is also done to make sure the screw has no obvious problems or irregularities. Since PVC was used, this screw was very clean. Steel brushes and scrapers are used to clean any remaining compound off the screw. Compound was noticed between the shaft bushing and outer bushing and will be cleaned. A lubricant is used to insert the screw back in on the end to help with friction. With the completion of the cleaning process, let's review some key points from the video.